Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I wonder who is here. I hope that you are having a beautiful evening and welcome to the Chopin by Candlelight Hour. In this hour, I'm just going to play some beautiful music of Chopin and nothing quite like the music of Chopin to make us think of poetry, beautiful things, and really to relax after a long week. So I would love to hear where you are tuning in from, just right in the chat, if you would. And I am from New Jersey, and here we are expecting 95 degree weather tomorrow. And so I thought, we need a little bit of cool down before the heat. So grab a glass of your favorite something something, your favorite beverage, and join me for some beautiful music and poetry. Today I will be reading a poem by the French poet Baudelaire, who was also like Chopin, living in the 19th century. And a lot of authors have made comparison between Chopin and Baudelaire. There are some similarities in the way that they expressed themselves. So I just would like to read a poem that my daughter Maya selected for tonight. I just said to her, Maya, choose something that speaks to you. And it's funny that as life goes, it always works out. There's a sympathetic resonance between, behind all of us. Oh, hi, Jeanette. Oh, how lovely for you to join. Where are you joining in from, Jeanette? Thanks for, thanks for being here tonight. So this Baudelaire poem has to do with drunkenness. And not necessarily in the way that we often think of drunkenness with alcohol, but it's possible to be drunk on the finer things in life. And so Baudelaire writes, be always drunken. Nothing else matters. That is the only question. If you would not feel the horrible burden of time weighing on your shoulders, and crushing you to the earth, be drunken continuously. Drunken with what? Well, with wine, with poetry, with virtue, as you will, but be drunken. So it is my hope and wish that tonight you will be drunken with the beautiful music of Chopin. It is the music of the wind, it is the music of the waves, the sea. It is the music of the heart. Other composers, Bach, for instance, he wrote about the stars and the universe and the spirit and those things that are so beyond conception and yet elevate us so deeply. Beethoven wrote about the ma majesty of the earth and the power and Chopin wrote about the human soul, this, the condition of our hearts, our emotions. And so I'd like to start with Chopin's beautiful prelude in D flat major. And just, I'd like to welcome everybody here. The Leo Glams, welcome, so happy you can join. Oh, you're from Hackensack, Jeanette, how wonderful. Beverly, yay! Thank you so much. Hey, Lizzie, good evening. So nice to see my usual prayer piano group here on a Friday night. Thank you for being here. All right, so we'll start with the prelude in D flat. Thank you. 
That is such a piece that describes the storm and also the gentle rain. There's a story that says that Chopin in Majorca, where he wrote these pieces, these preludes, that there was one night of rain and it got more and more ferocious and he was worried because his beloved had gone to get something at the market with the children and they weren't returning and it was now late and the storm and the rain was furiously pounding on the rooftop and Chopin was in despair. He didn't know what to do. He took all that angst and all that worry and somehow translated it into this middle section. But at the end, his beloved was back. And of course there were delays because in those days where they were staying, it was a monastery and it was high on a mountain and it was late at night and they can only get up this mountain with horses, donkeys and the such. And finally she returned back and all was well again. And so this piece ends on such a beautiful ray of sunshine. So welcome, welcome, Tabi. Thank you for being here. Hello, hello. I just feel the different movements. Thank you. Thank you, Padmini. Hi, sister and brothers. Ah, thank you so much. This is the Steinway. This is a Steinway from 1881. It is an absolutely beautiful piano and it has all of that golden richness of the era. And so I am so blessed to be able to play this instrument. And I believe that Chopin especially sounds magnificent on this piano. And so now we continue the program with a nocturne. Tonight we'll hear four nocturnes. What are nocturnes? They are night songs. Night songs where we experience the mystery of the night, the things that elude even words, feelings, forest murmurings, dreams, and yearnings. And in this nocturne, we hear a sad song, a sad song. Some nocturnes are not quite this sad. This one ends with just a deep yearning. And if you ever saw the movie, The Pianist, you might recognize this heart-wrenchingly beautiful nocturne from that movie. Has anybody seen that movie, The Pianist? That was, that was an oldie but goodie. And if not, well worth watching. So this is the Nocturne in C sharp minor.
What did you think of that? Did you enjoy that? Nocturne in C-sharp minor. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your feelings about these beautiful pieces. A person that had a lot of thoughts and a lot of feelings about Chopin was a man named Andre Guide. I think that's the way you say his name. This is an old book, Notes on Chopin that Guide wrote, and he was a Nobel winning author and a, a music lover. And he had a lot to say about Chopin. I just would like to read you a few notes that he had. And I think it really speaks so much to the heart and soul of this music. So he says, he was the one that made the comparison between Chopin and Baudelaire he says that Chopin's works used to be called unhealthy music and also Baudelaire's poetry was called unhealthy poetry. What does that mean? I rather think for the same reasons that both have a like concern for perfection, an equal horror of rhetoric, declamation, and oratorical development. But I would like to particularly note that I find in both the same use of surprise and of the extraordinary foreshortenings which achieve it. He also talks about how music of Chopin is the most perfect and pure music. And we do know that Chopin did painstakingly work so hard at his compositions to make sure that there was not one note that was excessive. And he was a man of spectacular taste in everything, not only music, but in the way he dressed, he was meticulous. The way that he kept his home meticulous. In fact, even when he didn't have money, he insisted that there be dove gray silk wallpaper on all the walls. That's a man after my own heart. That's what I have to say. Oh, that's so sweet, Beverly. So beautiful. Thank you. This is Chopin's first nocturne. So we just heard one of his last works of nocturnes, and now we'll hear his first. And this is got a gorgeous middle section that reminds me of the sea and just spectacular fairies in the sea. I don't know. I always have that picture in my mind every time I play the middle section. I would love to hear your ideas about this. What kind of pictures does this music make in your mind?
love that owl and a staircase. It's really transportative, that middle movement. Absolutely. Dark cores. Yeah, so many gorgeous and dark and dreamy type cores. Feels like a song for nighttime. Yes, these are beautiful, beautiful gossamer melodies. Perfect for just really dreaming. And music is, especially the Chopin music, is the music of dreams. Nothing quite like it. It's, it's impossible to put this into words. And now I'd like to play the second nocturne, which is in the key of E flat, a beautiful, sunny, sweet, full-hearted melody that uh, I think you will enjoy this beautiful piece.
the joy of love. Absolutely. Absolutely. I resonate with that. Odelia, hey, beautiful. Hi. Oh my gosh, so nice to have you all here. How exciting is this? I put on my evening dress for the occasion, even though I'm alone at home. <laughs> But I'm with you guys. So it's amazing. It's amazing. It is. It is such a melody that stays with you. Oh, with those high notes. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, that filigree up there. Chopin invented such incredible new ideas for the piano. Just to list some of them the things that he invented and created. One was forms of music. Music needs a structure. And so Chopin was never not satisfied just copying other structures only that existed. He created new structures as well. He created the structure of the ballad. The ballad until then was specifically a literary type or poetic structure, but he took that idea from poetry, which he loved poetry. He loved especially the poetry of his Polish contemporary, Anna Mickiewicz and others. But he took the idea of an epic grand poem, a ballad, and he turned that into music. So he wrote four ballads and each one of them has a huge dramatic scope. He never put any specific designations on his pieces that were literary. For instance, the first piece on the program was the Raindrop Prelude, but that was not something that he designated. He did not write Raindrop. Something like that would be too frivolous and trite for him. He always, Chopin always thought of music as way higher than anything describing something as raindrops. It's some. It, it's maybe the spirit of the raindrop, but then he takes it to another level. And so he created also mazurkas. Mazurka until then was just known as a Polish folk dance. Chopin took that idea and he incorporated it into a new musical form. And so right now we're going to hear one of his mazurkas and this is from the set of opus seven number two in the key of a minor and you'll hear some exotic harmonies in this one you'll hear some dance rhythms very folk inspired dance rhythms very earthy and as only chopin does like a chameleon he just slithers us from mood to mood from one world he slides us into another one and you'll hear all these wonderful episodes in this piece. Oh, Laura, hi, beautiful. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 
such a quirky piece, isn't it? It is so filled with different nuance and so many episodes, right? It is rustic dance and then there's coy and shy, slightly melancholic opening. It's, it's only Chopin. Thank you, Tavi. Tabi gives me such a compliment that I have a good feel for the Polish rhythms. The truth is I did dance some Polish dances as a kid. Not that that counts for anything really, but <laughs> I'm blessed that I was exposed to a lot of Polish culture. My parents are from Poland and Pol Polish is my first language and spent a lot of beautiful times in Poland. And Chopin never really got over leaving Poland. Chopin had to leave his homeland at 19, partly to make his career in Paris and partly also because of the revolution that was happening. And so he had to go and it was really something that he never quite got over. In fact, maybe some of these pieces that Chopin kept writing, mazurkas and polonaises, Polish dances, were to just keep him grounded and as a way of keeping in touch on such an emotional level with his homeland. He even said that upon his death, he wanted to have his heart in Poland. And so it is now. Chopin's heart could be found in Poland. I think it's in Warsaw. I'm not quite sure. Uh, Chopin died in Paris in 1849. And so, yeah, so he was buried there in uh, the, I think, Pierre Lachaise Cemetery. So Poland is rich in Chopin's blood although Chopin was 50% French. So here we go. Now we're going to move on with the Nocturne in D flat. I just want to quickly check the chat. Thank you so much for this lively chat. Oh, 
Oh gosh, yes. Fascinated about Poland. I would love to go to Poland this summer if it wasn't as crazy as the world is right now. But we can we can go there right now in music. That's the beauty of music. It transports us and we don't have to even leave our seat. Right? So here we go. We are now going to listen to one of my very favorite nocturnes. The one in D flat, opus 27, number two. It is a love song like no other in my book. And I hope you enjoy this.
Streets to have you here. Are you in Poland? Are you in Poland? Oh, thank you so much, Sabi. Isn't that, uh, these are all such gorgeous, gorgeous pieces. There's not, you could say one is my favorite or your favorite, but they're all just so perfect. They're so perfect. It's really like being in a candy store and all you can eat candy. This is just candy. Thank you for being here. I love how it takes you up and then becomes so quiet. It's so true. It is such living music and it is breathing all the time. One time I was practicing and I just had this wind come in. I think the window was open and just this gust of wind came in and it just felt that the music and the wind were one. And I know that sounds crazy, but I had this sense that this music is so special. There is so much great music, but there's something so unbelievable about Chopin. So now we move into another prelude. He wrote 24 preludes, each one in a different key, each one exploring different key colors and moods. And they are also enigmatic and intense and each one is so powerful. Each one says something so brilliantly. And in this one in F sharp, to me, it sounds like a lullaby, a tranquil, most gorgeous, delicious lullaby. And as we are approaching the evening time and time for sweet sleep, I just play this with all my heart for your sweetest, sweetest Chopin dreams tonight.
you think? Did it sound like a lullaby to you? I wonder. Oh, after Easter. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm so happy you're here. I think you are in New Mexico, right? You are amazing. You are amazing. This is the prelude that we just heard when Chopin came back from Mallorca after finishing his preludes and premiered this in Paris, people were astonished. They had never heard anything even close to this kind of dreamy landscape and so simple, so simple and yet speaks things that we can't possibly express. It, it just reveals the things of the heart, those feelings, those longings, those incredible things that reside that are so deep. And yet this music, it just brings it out. It knows us. It somehow knows us, right? And we don't know it. We feel it, but it knows us. And so that's why I think music is so healthy to listen to great music because of its purifying, cathartic properties. It's known, actually scientifically studied that certain music and certain pieces help us physically. And that's a, that's a well-known fact, but what they do for us also emotionally is incredible. Thank you. Thank you. It's, yes, it's, yeah, I, I do love it. I have to say, I do love it. It is a labor of love. It's hard work, no doubt. Anyone who plays music knows that it requires a lot of work, a lot of, a lot of discipline, and a lot of patience, patience, which is not something that comes so naturally to me patience. I have to work hard for patience. <laughs> so now we'll continue on. Uh, there are two more pieces I'd like to play for you. And this one is a waltz, continuing on our theme of the dance forms. We heard mazurkas before, and now we're going to hear a little waltz. And this one is really just a gorgeous, gorgeous one. Simple little thing, but again, a world in this simple little piece. Thank you. 
pieces tonight. Some of them familiar, some of them maybe less familiar. And now I'd like to close the program with a very familiar piece, the Fantasy Impromptu. Fantasy Impromptu is one of these pieces that I actually did a tutorial video about this because this piece has a, one of the qualities that Chopin has in his music is this idea of cross rhythms where you have one rhythm in the left hand moving and another one over it in the right. So these polyrhythms. And I'll never forget when I was learning this piece as a teenager and I just was new to Chopin and I didn't understand how it's possible to play six, three notes in the left hand and four notes in the right hand and have them stack over each other and make it work. And so I was really having a hard time with this. And so week after week, I'd go to the lesson and it just didn't sound like anything fantasy impromptu-ish at all. It sounded like uh, I would practice it slowly and I would try to get these notes aligned in rhythm and it sounded like... And I thought, how in the world does it ever go from that to... I couldn't understand and so it was kind of this moment where I was struggling with it and struggling and then finally one day one day it was sort of like when you finally take the training wheels off of your bike as a kid I was practicing and practicing and then and then something happens again this wind has to come, this wind which moves the music without your brain overanalyzing and overcounting it. And then this wind sweeps in and then you go from this to, to, and it's just the most spectacular, I'll never forget that moment where it just started to move and it was exhilarating. And that's when I thought, how does this magic happen? It's the truly magic alchemy of Chopin. So I hope you enjoy the fantasy impromptu. Thank you. 
sure did. Thank you for the chat. Thank you for joining in from all these different places in the world. And I wish you a night of beauty, joy, peace, love, contentment. And no matter what the storms might be outside, we can always find peace and contemplation and stillness in the sweetness of music and the sweetness of prayer. And if you are interested in the fusion of prayer and classical music, you could join us on Sundays for our usual live stream. It's called the Prayer Piano Live Stream and it happens at noontime on Sundays. And it will be resuming on June 